WDAM, Laurel Hattiesburg. You're watching News 7 at 6.30. You've got 7 on your side. A press conference is held concerning Southern Miss athletics. Also, a hot button issue dominates a meeting of the Mississippi Association's police chiefs. Plus, the NTSB is being asked to reopen the investigation into the crash of TW8 Flight 800. And Starbucks will soon debut a new addition to its menu. Good evening, I'm Vanessa Pacheco. For the services of Bob Bodine, president and CEO of Eastman and Bodine, the premier athletics administrative search firm in the country. Bennett also secured the services of Ben Stooley, who is a former University of Georgia head football coach and former long-term University of Georgia athletics director. Bennett said he hopes to have a new AD in place by the end of August. Visit WDAM.com to view the press conference in full. Well, that takes us to our poll question. Do you agree with the decision not to renew Hammond's contract? Tell us what you think. Vote yes or no in our online poll at WDAM.com. We'll have the final results tonight at 10. Well, South Haven Mayor Greg Davis is stepping down from office a few days early. Davis made the announcement at Tuesday's Alderman meeting. His term does not end until next month, but he's resigning from the job he's held for 16 years, effective June 28th. Davis will pass the reins over to Darren Musselwhite, who defeated him in the June 4th general election. He said he has no plans to get back into politics. Jones County authorities say more graffiti is surfing around the county and it's causing an increase in crime. Jones County Gang Task Force Director Tanya Madison says the gang issue in Jones County is real. Madison says many of the gang members spray paint buildings as a way to mark their territory. She says since school is out, more kids are roaming the streets and committing misdemeanor charges. When we, we interview gang members, we always ask them what their street name is, what their... Uh, nicknames are and that helps us to pinpoint who Robert D may be or who D man may be uh, so we'll put it in our, our file to know who that person is if something else comes up in the near future. Madison says if residents see or suspect any gang activity in or around their communities simply call the Jones County Sheriff Department for assistance. Well, on July 1st, any Mississippi adult who can legally buy a gun can then carry it openly in public. House Bill 2 passed the legislature earlier this year, and it has law enforcement officials worried. The Mississippi Association of Police Chief is meeting this week in Biloxi, and the new law is a hot topic of discussion. Most of the chiefs say they will have to implement more officer training to deal with people who carry guns in public. They also say police officers aren't the only ones who need training. Carrying a gun is a mixed blessing. If you don't have proper training and weapon retention, uh, you can have your own weapon taken away from you. Now, and obviously it will be a good thing for people that know their guns, uh, have security holsters, and realize that they may be a victim of their own weapon. If you want to carry a concealed weapon, you still have to apply for a state issue permit. Well, there are thousands of immigrants living in the United States who are eligible to become citizens, but for some, several reasons, many never get the path to become naturalized. As Michelle Lady reports, the United States Citizenship and Immigration Services is trying to change that. The United States of America is known as the land of opportunity. It's a place many around the world dream of calling home. I like to live in America because America is the land of freedom, land of brave. I like this country and I'm, I'm happy in this country. Orly hails from Madagascar and Gladys from Honduras. They are taking a class in Biloxi to help them become an American citizen. Read, write and speak English. Wednesday, the class was able to ask questions and learn more about the process of naturalization. There are thousands of people who are actually eligible for citizenship but have yet to file, mainly because they don't understand the process. You must be a U.S. resident for five years or three years if you're married to an American. Once you meet those requirements, your regardees told students it takes about four months. We're here to help you. We'll show you how easy it is to become a citizen. We are nice people and we want to make sure that you are afforded every opportunity that everyone else is. More than 40 million immigrants live in the United States according to the American Citizen Services, but only about 45% of those became citizens in 2011. 
RTs hopes by talking with immigrants, it will put them at ease and encourage them to become naturalized. Going through the pomp and circumstance of a naturalization ceremony, it shows them that they are important, that they count, and that America welcomes them with open arms. Orly and Gladys say they can't wait for that moment. It's something they've dreamed about their entire lives. I want to become an American citizen. Oh, I would feel happy. If you would like to learn more about the citizenship program in Biloxi, you can call 228-374-6554. Attorney, Attorney General Jim Hood says Governor Phil Bryan does not have legal authority to continue the Medicaid expansion program by executive order. Medicaid is set to end June 30th. That's because lawmakers failed to reauthorize the program or set its budget by the end of the legislative session in April. This opposing opinion by Hood could help increase the pressure on Bryan to call a special session. The state health department reports the second human case of West Nile virus for the year, and this one is close to home. Forest County, in fact, state epidemiologist Thomas Dobbs says we're getting into the high-risk season for West Nile, so you need to protect yourself against mosquitoes. The city of Moss Point is preparing for a massive cleanup of a storm blows this way during hurricane season. The Board of Aldermen voted last night to begin advertising for a contractor handle debris, to handle debris removal process. It was MEMA and FEMA that encouraged the city to start searching for a firm now instead of waiting until after a storm. City Aldermen says they agree it's better to plan ahead and place, especially after dealing with so many flooding woos over the past years throughout the city. For Katrina, I know that it, take, it took a time for us to get the debris cleaned up within the city. So again, going on the history of those who have served in times past, then we were best informed to go ahead on and get a start on this now. So then when, if there is a storm, we'll already be ahead of the game. The city hopes to start advertising for the job this month. Well, officials from the Queen City were in the Hub City today to see how Hattiesburg is redeveloping its downtown area. Meridian City Council members and tourism representatives were part of the delegation that met with the Hattiesburg Downtown Association's Design Committee to discuss successful neighborhood revitalization efforts and other projects. City engineer Burke Kirkendall spoke about the traffic and parking issues, while Ward 2 Councilwoman Deborah Delgado presented an update of the city's Ward 2 redevelopment project called Twin Forks Rise. They're interested in how we've succeeded in downtown Hattiesburg and wanted some information on how they could take the sample that we have and make it work in Meridian. They've done a lot of planning, a lot of development. So if we can share some of those things or we can share with the city of Hattiesburg some of the things we're doing in Meridian, I think both of us benefit. The visit included a bus tour of the Mobile Street District and other historic areas. Coming up, a new documentary aims to break the silence of the crash of TWA Flight 800. We'll have more details in a moment. Nick, the weather was pretty weird today. It was yeah. raining, sunny, rainy, sunny. Any you're, more weird weather in the future forecast? No, I think you've got it down. Here, you're ready to go. Oh, thank you. Okay, you can well. You head on over to the wall. So and, what are we looking at here? Yeah, we're looking at, uh, yes, more scattered showers and storms around the uh, Pine Belt. We also have a possibility of uh, seeing some well, more rain as we go into the weekend. We'll talk more about that. But tonight we're going to start with a tropical update. You've got uh, this, which was tropical depression number two, is now tropical storm Barry. Barry is on its way towards Mexico. It actually got over the Bay of Campeche. A little bit of water allowed it to strengthen during the afternoon hours. Looks more impressive on satellite. The winds are 40 miles per hour. The movement west at 6 miles per hour. And you're going to watch this track from the National Hurricane Center take it right back into Mexico. So it's going to make a second landfall and most likely weaken pretty quickly. I don't know if you can tell this on your screen, but this is a mountainous region over in Mexico. So as soon as it's making landfall, we're going to probably watch it drop down uh, pretty quickly. That landfall is probably going to happen sometime tomorrow in the late morning or early afternoon hours. Not a threat to the United States and, of course, not a threat to South Mississippi. The Almanac today up to 85 degrees. This is below average. Nice to see some 80s in the forecast here. Alpha Insurance Sky Camera this evening's over at Forest General Hospital in Hattiesburg, where we do have some rain around the area there. Temperature at 81, already picking up 700s in the rain gauge, but most of that coming from this morning. 
Uh, 78 degrees right now in Collins, 80 in Laurel, 84 in Richton. And we do have a few showers around the area. And you can notice this uh, from the METAR side over at the Hattiesburg Airport. The rain icon's up, 81 degrees, 79% humidity makes it feel like 86 right now. And a little bit of a breeze out of the northeast at about 5 miles per hour. So let's look at that radar. We'll spend a little bit of time here. We had some showers and storms earlier up in our northern counties, Smith, Clark, Jasper County. You see that kind of dissipate as it's moving towards the south. And that energy has kind of jumped over to the left side of your screen to the west of I-59. So we'll tighten up there and you'll see that the rain right now through parts of uh, Jeff Davis is not too bad. Just a good downpour on the south side of the county. But this storm right here over in Covington headed towards Summerall right now in the north side of Lamar County. Some lightning associated with that. We saw some lightning earlier with the storm around Columbia. It seems to be falling apart a little bit. So at this point, I would say our strongest storm on the map is on its way towards Summerall right now. So if you're in that area, watch out for the lightning and the heavy downpour that's going to be on your way. Uh, meanwhile, we had some rain pop up around parts of Hattiesburg, a little broken shower there. That energy also translating over to that storm uh, coming out of the south side of Covington. So if you're in the north side of Lamar or north side of Forest, you're going to probably see that rainfall within the next half hour or so. Future cast for precipitation shows the rain chance is diminishing in the later evening hours, but could come back tomorrow afternoon anytime after 2 o'clock. This is 5 o'clock tomorrow. I'll call it about a 20% chance of rain for both your Thursday and your Friday. Tonight, 67 degrees for the overnight low, so a cooler night. Enjoy that. Winds light tomorrow morning by 8 o'clock. We're going to be warming right back up. We're up to 75 degrees there. 11 o'clock, we're up to 85. And then the clouds will be on the increase a little bit with that possible scattered shower or storm in those later afternoon hours. The best rain chance, though, will come between about 2 and 4 o'clock. We're not up in the likely chart here. We're still in the isolated chart. So uh, just a 20% chance of rain between that 2 and 6 o'clock hour for your Thursday. Uh, the breakdown over the next few days, you've got a 20% chance of rain for Thursday and Friday. Unfortunately, as I was alluding to earlier, the weekend's not so great. Saturday, a 40% chance of rain. Highs in the 90s for the next few days, but that best rain chance over the next seven will come on Saturday. Sunday, a 30% chance of rain. Same thing on Monday. And then Tuesday and Wednesday of next week, about a 20% chance of showers. Uh, coming up in a little bit, we'll take a look at your coastal forecast, so stay with us. Vanessa, back to you. President Obama and the First Lady left Germany today, boarding Air Force One in Berlin. The president spent the day meeting with German leaders. The visit culminated in the president's speech in front of Berlin's iconic Brandenburg Gate. In his speech, President Obama said he would ask Russia to join the U.S. in dramatically reducing supplies of nuclear warheads. He also called for a new global effort to deal with the climate's change. Today's speech took place almost exactly 50 years after President Kennedy famously declared I am Berliner from the same spot in 1963. A new call today for the NTSB to reopen the investigation into the TW8 Flight 800 crash. In a new documentary, a group of former investigators alleged that the government covered up the true cause of the 1996 crash that killed 230 people. ABC's Marcy Gonzalez reports. They were at the center of the investigation into the crash of TWA Flight 800, examining the wreckage of the 747 that exploded over Long Island, killing 230 people. But now, 17 years later, six former investigators, including the senior NTSB investigator on the case, are coming forward in a soon-to-be-released documentary, claiming the final report into the crash is wrong, falsified, they say, by the FBI and others. The agenda was that this is an accident, make it so. The four-year-long NTSB investigation revealed that it was a fuel tank explosion that brought down the Paris-bound plane. But the six now retired investigators say they have radar and forensic evidence to prove the explosion came from outside of the aircraft. The general consensus is, is it was either a terrorist attack that they wanted to ignore or an accident as a result of uh, military operations that went wrong and they didn't want to acknowledge responsibility for it. They filed a petition for federal investigators to reopen the case. The chair of the NTSB says they will consider the request. The National Air Disaster Alliance, a group supporting air crash victims and their families, released a statement today saying they have full confidence in the NTSB's final findings, calling the claims being made today nauseating and an exploitation of the victims. Marcy Gonzalez, ABC News, New York. 
Still ahead, Starbucks is set to soon post a new addition to their menus. We'll explain after this. Starbucks says it will start posting calorie counts on menu boards and bakery cases at its coffee houses across the U.S. next week. The move comes ahead of a pending federal requirement to post such information at restaurant chains. In a new release, Starbucks says calorie information is already available on its printed brochures, company websites, and iPhone apps. The counts will appear in stores beginning next Tuesday. Electric car maker Tesla Motors is recalling more than 1,000 new vehicles because of a rear seat problem. The recall involves a Model S cars manufactured between May and early June. A welding problem could allow one of the back seats to come loose in an accident. Tesla says it will contact the affected vehicle owners and arrange for a fix at no cost. The company says there have been no complaints or injuries caused by the problem. And if you're a Shrek fan, you'll soon get to see the lovable, disgruntled ogre in all his green glory on the small screen. Netflix and DreamWorks Animated Inc. a multi-year deal on Monday. The deal calls for 300 hours of original TV series on the internet streaming services featuring DreamWorks characters. The first series is expected to begin airing on Netflix in 2004. Coming up, Nick will have the final check on the weather. Also, we'll take a look on what's trending online. Stay with us. Bottoms up. Today is National Dry Martini Day. Although vodka martinis are more popular, martinis are traditionally made from gym and vermouth. It is not clear who invented the first cocktail, but it was made with equal parts of gin to vermouth. These days, the ratio is more like two parts alcohol to one part vermouth. A dry martini uses dry vermouth, but that's not the only way to make a martini dry. The less vermouth in a martini, the drier it is. So dry can also refer to alcohol ratio. Interesting. Yeah. I guess some people who like it really dry, they just put the vermouth in it and they throw it out of the glass. Yeah, I wouldn't even they... know. I'm not a martini drinker. Not shaken, not stirred. No. no. You have a favorite? Uh, no, I'm, I'm not for me. Water for drinkers me. here. Yeah, right, mm -hmm. exactly. Let's go ahead and we'll take a look at the seven-day uh, forecast. We do have uh, some rain chances in there, 20% uh, chance of rain next couple of days, 40% on Saturday. That's going to be our best rain chance, 30% Sunday and Monday, 20%. Tuesday and Wednesday. The coastal forecast uh, for tomorrow, the seas, not bad at all. In fact, Mississippi Sound, just a foot or less. And then you've got the uh, seas in the uh, offshore area, about one to two feet there. Winds northwest, five to 10 miles per hour. Saturday, 88 degrees for the high temperature. Sunday, 89. I hear rain right now here at the station. And as I'm hearing it, I remember I left a little crack. Oh, I got a new windshield to today. Well, I had to put up. a little crack in it, not to cause problem with the new windshield. Well, I and think I can handle it from here running open them <laughs> yeah, up. <laughs> yeah, it's all right. We'll, we'll wrap up. Let's go ahead and we'll take a look what's trending. Okay, well, the hot topic on our Facebook page today is USM President Ronnie Bennett announcing the athletic director Jeff Hammond's contract will not be renewed beyond June 30th. If you want to join in the, in the conversation, and we hope you do, head over to our Facebook page. And a bear climbs up and sniffs a guy in a tree stand. Look at this. This, this is so is funny. I would yeah. be so scared. It's funny, but I would be scared. It's funny because he's okay. But yeah, this guy is in the tree stand, and this bear. Bears are great climbers, actually. I didn't. I and really didn't know that. Yeah. I okay. See how he's close to that person oh, he's right, right there. Right next to him, and he's a hunter, so I imagine he's probably got a gun if he needs it, but he probably didn't want to use it. I mean, it's a nice, nice looking bear. It's Even nice though that's guy. a high distance up, I would probably try to jump. I would be so scared. I don't know. He actually, we're, we're not going to show you this, but he turns the camera and points it to his face and has a comment, not necessarily appropriate for TV, but it, uh, it is on YouTube if you want to see his uh, natural reaction to, it wasn't just that bear, there's another bear uh, down on the ground as well. And he climbed that tree really fast. They climb great. They could knock over the tree probably if they really wanted to. So that's not the best place to be if you're a hunter. Wow. Well, I'm going to go take care of that window that's cracked outside. Yeah, you outside. do that. It you're, is pouring. You have like a water puddle in. Right. I'm out of here. Well, thank See you for ya. joining us. Have a great evening. Good night.